Good morning. We are on the record. This is the digital video deposition of Bellin Lemus testifying in the matter of Bruno et al. versus County of Los Angeles et al. Case number 817CV01301 CJCJDE. Today we are located at 555 Anton Boulevard, Suite 1200, Costa Mesa, California. Today's date is October 18th, 2018. Time on the video monitor is 10.09 a.m. My name is John Immel. I'm the video specialist today. The certified shorthand reporter is Michelle Hutton. We represent Crown Court Reporting. Will counsel please introduce yourselves for the record? Sean McMillan appearing on behalf of plaintiffs. Megan Lieber for Defendants County of Los Angeles. Mary Cruz Perez, Jason Schmoker, John Lee, and the witness, Bella Lemus, who is present. Candace Hollock on behalf of Defendant Chalk Children's Hospital of Orange County. Brian Moore for Defendants County of Orange, Laura Todd, and Nicole Stratman. The reporter may swear in the witness. Please raise your hand. Do you solemnly state that the testimony you will give in this deposition will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? So help you out? I do. Good morning, Ms. Lemus. Can you please state and spell for us your full name? Belen Lemus, B E L E N L E M U S. You have a middle initial? I don't, sir. Where do you currently work? I am assigned, um, well, I work for the Los Angeles County Sheriff's Department, and I'm currently assigned to Special Victims Bureau. Is there any particular sort of case that you normally deal with with the Special Victims Bureau? Um, I investigate cases that have to do with physical abuse, sexual abuse of children, uh, adult rapes, sexual assaults, uh, child pornography. <coughs> how long have you been doing that? That's sort of work, how long have you been doing it? I would say approximately five years. So like 2013 or so is when you started? Um, I started, I was assigned to Special Victims uh, on, October four, on October 2014. However, prior to that, I was assigned to that unit on loan uh, between 2009 and 2010. Okay. What do you mean by on loan? Um, I was assigned to a patrol station, to a patrol station, but because there were there were a lot of uh, backlogged cases, I went to assist. Assist with investigations or something else? No, with investigations, sir. <clears throat> Currently, you are a detective, correct? Yes, sir. When did you become a detective? Well, to special victims, uh, assigned at special victims. Um, well, no, I mean. Overall? Just period. When did you first become a detective? Um, in 2007, April of 2007. Where were you assigned in April of 2007 when you first became a detective? At Carson Station. Any particular unit? No, I worked um, crimes against persons and I also worked property crimes. How long did you do that? Two years. So until about 2009? Yes, sir. When you were there at the Carson station, were you assigned to patrol? No, sir. Okay. What happened between 2009 and 2000? Oh, I apologize. Um, so after I left Carson station, I went back to patrol. Okay. Um, and I went to industry station. Were you still satisfying job duties at patrol as a detective? I would say yes when I worked overtime. Okay. 
And when you worked overtime, was that in situations similar to when you were on loan um, to the special victims unit? Where you would do your normal patrol duties and then in addition to that, maybe you would be helping out clearing up a backlog of investigations or something like that. I'm not sure I'm understanding, sir. Um, so when I was assigned at Carson Station, uh, my, my assignment was Detective Bureau. Mm -hmm. I would also work overtime in the field where I would answer calls for service. Okay. That was just for overtime. And that was when you were at Carson Station? Correct. What about when you went back to patrol? Okay. So when I went to Industry Station, I went to work as a field, as a patrol deputy. As a, sorry? As a patrol deputy, answering calls for service, and that was my assignment. Was that a demotion? I guess, yes, it would be. Okay. Was there a reason for it? I still wanted to work patrol. I felt that my patrol time, I still felt I wanted to work patrol. I enjoyed it. You enjoyed <laughs> that work it. more? Yes, sir. Okay. So it wasn't that you were, um, let me make sure I understand this. It was a choice you made to go back to patrol, not something where management said, hey, you're going back to patrol. Correct. Okay. Then how long were you in patrol before you decided that maybe it wasn't so great after all and you wanted to be a detective? Well, um, when I went to Industry Station, they asked me to go on loan. After a few months there, they asked me to go on loan to special victims. That was only a temporary assignment. Mm -hmm. In 2010, I went back to patrol. Okay. So but for about a year, you were on special assignment? For nine months, yes. Okay. Then you went back to patrol? Correct. But then? Um, from there, I was called to... I was called to work on loan to a homicide task force. When was that? Let me think, sir. You don't have to call me, sir. I'm just a guy. <laughs> it's okay. It makes me feel old when you do that. And I know I'm getting old, but I'm not quite there yet. Sean, I'm a lot younger than you, and she calls me ma'am, so. <laughs> we'll throw doesn't, that out there. Doesn't that make you feel uncomfortable? It, it does, but, you know, that's, that's what makes her comfortable, so. All right, well, I'd prefer you don't, but if, if it helps you, do what you need to do. Yes, sir. Um, <laughs> so I, w I don't remember the exact dates, but I know um, I was on loan to the task force, uh, I believe, in 2010, for the, for the majority of 2010. Okay, that's the homicide task, task yes, force. Sir. Okay. What did you do after that? I went uh, back to the field. To industry station. So back to patrol? Yes, sir. Okay. And that was 2011-ish? Yes. It would have been late 2010 or early 2011. How long were you at patrol until you um, ended up going to special victims unit as a detective on a permanent basis? After the homicide task, uh, after the task force, I went well, I remained in patrol until October of 2014. Okay. Where did you go to high school? In City of Industry. <coughs> Is there a name sure. of the high school? Yes, sir. William Workman High School. I'm sorry? William Workman High School. Did you go to college? Uh, some college, sir. Where at? Um, Mount San Antonio College. Where's that? City of Walnut. Is that a four-year college? Mm, two years, sir. Two years. Did you obtain a degree there? No. What did you study? Um, I took, um, my, I guess, the basic general education classes. When did you go there? I would say, I think right after high school, and then once I was hired on the, um, with the LA County Sheriff's Department. So I, it, was, it wasn't where I went consistently, it was I took classes as I could. Okay, I got you. I sort of did the same thing with mine. It took me like 10 years. <laughs> you know, you do things. 
So when did you start? I mean, I, I understand you said directly out of high school you started taking classes. When would that have been? What year? Uh, it would have been 1994. Was there a period of time where you were there at San Antonio, Mount San Antonio College taking classes full-time? I never went full-time. Okay. It was always part-time? Yes. Okay. And you didn't have any... Um, area of concentration that you were focused on? No, sir. Okay. How long was it from the time you started at Mount San Antonio until you started working with the Sheriff's Department, LA County Sheriffs? Well, I believe it would have been three years. So you started with LA County Sheriffs around 1997? Yes, sir, in July of 1997. And at that time, were you still at least part-time at Mount San Antonio? Yes, sir, on and off. Okay. It depended on my work schedule. Okay. When you first started with LA County Sheriffs, what capacity did you start in? I, I was employed as a custody assistant. What is that? Uh, I was assigned to work a jail facility, and um, my duties were to, obviously, the security of the inmates. Secure inmates, what, what, what do you mean? What does that mean? Um, my duty was, was to oversee the, the security of the inmates um, and then make sure that they um, had, you know, their meals or in their doctor um, visits. It was basically overseeing the inmates. Okay. Was it administrative or were you actually, you know, like in the jail hands-on? I was hands-on. Okay. Was that a woman's facility? No, sir. How long did you do that? I was uh, hired as a deputy in 1999, in April of 1999. I believe that's what it was, April. Hmm. So when you hired on originally in 1997, July, with the County of Los Angeles, you were not a deputy? Correct. Okay, was that like what, like a civilian employee or something? Yes. Okay, so when you were in the jail, you weren't wearing like a gun and a stick and all that stuff? Correct, sir. Okay. Prior to being hired on by the County of Los Angeles Sheriff's Department as a deputy in April 1999, did you have any training specific to the job you would be doing as a deputy that is before you were hired to be a deputy I guess I would say I did have some training in regards to the inmate security because as a deputy if you're assigned to a custody facility you essentially do the same as a custody assistant or back then, that's mm -hmm. how it was. Okay. So did you get some training on the Eighth Amendment and how that might apply to uh, regulate in some way the way you interacted with prisoners at the prison? I'd have to agree, sir. Okay. Was that formal training? Well, um, we, as a custody assistant, you go through training uh, prior to getting or getting assigned to it. Uh, you have to go through an academy. I don't remember how long it was. Okay, so even just to become a custody assistant, you had to go through some sort of coursework? Yes, sir. Okay, and you, don't, you just don't remember how long that course took? No. Can you give me an estimate? Two months, four months? It wasn't, um, it wasn't four months. I don't remember if it was up to two months. I mean, I know okay. it was several weeks. Okay, and that training back then, that would have been training that you received sometime around 1997? Correct, in, in July. Okay. And then you received further training aside from that before you became a deputy, is that correct? Uh, 
if you're talking about if during the academy when I went to to be a deputy? Well, let me ask you this because maybe I'm misunderstanding. You had an academy, a series of academy courses you had to take to become a custody assistant, right? Yes, sir. Is that separate and apart from any further education or training that you had to undergo to become a deputy? Correct. Okay, so there's an, another series of courses you had to take. Yes, sir. And did you take those courses before becoming a deputy or after you'd been hired as a deputy? When I was hired as a deputy. So you took the courses after you'd already been hired? Correct. Okay. So that would have been sometime April or after April 1999? Correct, sir. And correct me if I'm wrong, but back then, when you first became a deputy, you were still assigned to um, the jail, right? Correct. How long did you do that? Um, and so I went back to custody as a deputy, and then I worked um, in the jails until... Sorry, so I'm trying to remember. Oh, that's okay. Um, until 2001. So I believe in early 2001 is when I went back to the academy, and I, also, and I, and I went um, back for a 16 or 18 week training course. What was that for? Initially, when I got hired as a deputy, um, they, that was only a, a, like a four or five week course. I don't remember where we just, um, where we were limited in our duties, I was not able to go and work patrol because I didn't have the, the training okay. required for that. Okay, so there's different training required for each post, if I'm understanding? When I went through the, the program, yes, sir. Okay, so initially, when you were a custody assistant, there was specific training related to the, your job duties there, right? Yes, sir. Then there was another four to five week course that you undertook to become or when you became a custody deputy at the jail, right? Yes, sir. Then there was another 16 to 18 week course that you took when you went over to patrol. Yes, sir. When did you take that course, the 16 to 18 week course? It, if I believe it was sometime in mid-summer, sir. I, I know I graduated in October of 2001. Now that 16 to 18 week course, was that formal training where you actually were in a classroom type situation? Yes. Okay, and that was for the whole 16 to 18 weeks? Correct. Okay. Did they provide you written materials in that training? Yes. Okay. Did you maintain those written materials? I don't think I kept everything. What did you keep? Oh my goodness, um, I, I couldn't tell you, sir. Um, I'm trying to think if I would have kept anything, it would have been like the policies for like the department. I mean, they give us, um, I mean, they gave us a lot of manuals, I don't remember. A lot of information. Yes. Sort of hard to keep track of all of it. As, as far as, yes, because we, like for example, if we had a, a like a lecture on, on something, on a subject, um, like those books that I used or to study, I would pass them on to other students who, who went through the academy. So it's, I mean, I don't remember specifically what I kept. But when we're talking about all that information, all that material over those 16 to 18 weeks, I think you said that it's a lot of information, right? Yes. And am I correct that there's so much there, in fact, that it's hard to keep track of all of it. Vague. Uh, you can answer. Um, I, I mean, I guess I would say this. I don't. I can't specifically tell you what what information was given to me or what manuals or anything like that. You couldn't tell me what any of that specific training was. Um, I'm state's testimony. You can go ahead. Unless she tells you not to answer, um, you still have to answer. Okay. Um, yes, sir. I mean, I can tell you that we, we, you know, there were like uh, learning domains on search and seizure. There were learning domains on child abuse, um, on domestic violence, on use of force, um, things like that.
When you say learning domains, what does that mean? That's just the, um, I guess, the name that they used for the actual uh, subject we were they were teaching at the time. Okay, so like the name of the course? Yes. Okay. The course on search and seizure, the learning doma domain on search and seizure. What do you remember about that? Vague and overbroad. If anything, if you don't remember anything, you can just tell me that. I mean, specifically, I can't mm -hmm. tell you exactly what they told me, but I know that it had to do with, um, you know, they, they taught us about when our, I guess, when we come across mm -hmm. uh, people in the field, about um, searching the home, using warrants. Um, I mean, it's, there's a lot of information in regards to search and seizure. Do they teach you anything about the Fourth Amendment to the United States Constitution? Yes, sir. Okay. What do you recall of that? Just generally, it's fine. Yeah, I was going to say, I don't know specifically. Um, yeah, I know, I, so with, with 2001, right? Well, in regards to search and seizure or the, or the Fourth Amendment, how uh, people have a right to, um, to privacy and, and uh, unwarranted seizure unless in their home, mm -hmm. um, in their persons, uh, papers and effects, unless there's a, there's a, a, war, a probable cause mm -hmm. for a warrant. Okay. Well, unless there's actually either a warrant issued. Yes, sir. Probable cause standing alone is not enough, right? Yes, sir. Unless there's a signed, there's an actual signed warrant. Right. Or emergency. For if there's an emergency, then you don't need a warrant. Right? Oh, correct, sir. Um, yes. Okay. Exigent, um, exigent circumstances or consent. Okay. When is the last time that you had that sort of training? I know you had it back in 2001 in that uh, a 16 to 18 week course, right? That's correct, isn't it? That you had that type of training regarding, you know, getting warrants, the Fourth Amendment, the exceptions that apply. You had that training as part of your 16 to 18 week course prior to becoming a patrol deputy, correct? Correct, sir. Okay. Have you had any of that type of training that is on the Fourth Amendment, how it might restrict your powers as a law enforcement agent? Have you had any of that kind of training since your 2001 course? Yes. Okay. When was the last time that you had training regarding how the Fourth Amendment applies to restrict your powers as a law enforcement agent? I'm trying to think the last time. The last time I can specifically remember, um, I think it would have been when I took the child abuse investigation course uh, in 2014. Okay, let me see if we can pin down a specific date for that. I'll show you what we'll mark as exhibit number 53. Which one is it? Yeah, okay, 53 to your deposition. <laughs> you know what? Even though Adrian did the copies, he only gave me three. I'm sorry. Somewhat inconsistent. <clears throat> you can note that on his next review. I will. I will. I'll say Adrian. But actually, he'll review the depot. So he'll know exactly. <laughs> he will be very embarrassed. <laughs> yeah. uh, can you take a moment, please, and review exib exhibit number 53? And it consists of several pages. In fact, while you're reviewing it, I'll just identify it. It, it uh, contains Bates numbered COLA00782 through and including page bearing Bates number COLA00788.
I heard of that. Okay. Cool. What is that exhibit number 53, or what does it appear to you to be? Um, it's a list of courses that I have uh, completed. Okay. And when you said earlier that the warrant um, subject matter, the Fourth Amendment to the United States Constitution, that subject matter, you believed it had been covered in your child abuse investigations training. First of all, did I understand you correctly? Yes, sir. Okay. Is that training reflected here somewhere in Exhibit 53? Um, yes. Okay, and where is that? Um, I believe it would be the number, the third one on, on page 782. Okay. Can you do me a favor and just put a little star next to that? Do you know whether or not, as you're sitting here today, do you know whether or not the, the entries that follow that, that is the child abuse and neglect reporting training and the, actually there's two, um, child abuse and neglect reporting trainings there on the bottom part of page 00782, right? Yes. Do you know, as you're sitting here today, whether either of those trainings also included uh, Fourth Amendment components? I don't know. I don't remember. They specifically contain that. Okay. And then looking at the date here, December 12th, 2014, on <clears throat> the child abuse investigation training, would that have been when you completed the course? That would have been the, the date as far as December 24th. I mean, I remember I attended in, in December, I, I mean in 2014, I, I specifically don't remember that date. Okay. Did you have to sign in? Yes. Okay. Did you get um, some sort of credit for it? Um, I I believe I received like a certificate of completion for the pro for the course. Okay. Is there a certain number of hours? <clears throat> is there a certain number of hours of education or continuing education that you're required to complete each year? Not that I'm aware of, sir. I don't remember. Okay, so this would have been something that you just were doing because you were interested. It wasn't something that was required. Well, this is something that um, I believe is required by the unit by the Special Victims Bureau unit. Okay, so that's something that when you transferred into the Special Victims Unit, you would have been required to take to prepare you for your new job duties. Yes, sir. Okay. Let's see, I have, well, let's do this one first. I'm gonna show you exhibit number 54. Again, sorry guys, just have two. <clears throat> Do you recognize that exhibit number 54? Yes. Okay, what I'm gonna ask you to do, well, let me ask you this first. What is exhibit number 54? Um, it appears to be the training that I have received since I came on the department, maybe? So like a training transcript? Yes, sir. Okay. Can you do me a favor and go through Exhibit 54, your training transcript, and identify for me, and again, you can just place a mark next to the course name on the left-hand side of the page, but identify for me those courses that you recall that would have contained a uh, component relative to how the Fourth Amendment, the search and seizure laws, and warrants might in some way impact the work that you would be doing as a law enforcement agent. 